Hey, this is James Ortolani with Wilflex Inks. Tyler Dummett with Workhorse Products. Dave with Dick Clark Associates. Alan Howe with Saudi Chem. You're listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Aaron Montgomery and Terry Combs. Welcome to the show. All right. Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, March 29th, 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at equipmentzone.com and terrycombs.com. And my name is Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at AaronMontgomery.info. Uh, today, we're going to be bringing in a friend of mine, Will Hankey, who's with Red Canoe Media here in the St. Louis area. And uh, he is an expert on SEO and, and all things uh, website related and, and a fantastic guy to know. And uh, plus, he's going to talk to us about some fun stuff, too, Terry. Uh, some of our favorite things, beer. And uh, and then and float trips. I I really want to actually want to learn a lot more about float trips. Uh, being an Arizona guy in an area where they actually do float trips, I don't know a whole lot about it. So uh, <laughs> we'll learn <laughs> learn some today. Because you don't need to learn anything about beer. Is that is that? Oh no, I plan here? on learning something about beer. But I <laughs> I feel like I've done lo- I've I've got quite a bit of a decent education when it comes to beer, actually. So much, um, much research done, right? <laughs> yes, yes. In fact, I just spent uh, all all last weekend uh, doing uh, an excessive amount of research on it on the subject there in in Las Vegas. So uh, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll leave what happened in Las Vegas in Las Vegas. But uh, <laughs> perfect. You did send me a couple of pictures, but uh, nothing that couldn't be posted on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't send you the other pictures. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what what news items do, do you have there, Terry, before we get into the, the meat of it here? Well, first, uh, trade shows are, are, are in uh, full swing right now. So ISS is uh, now calling for presenters for 2020. So make sure you mark your calendars. The deadline for submissions for the 2020 ISS conference is April 26th. So it is around the corner. Uh, and their message is, please note that we cannot put you on the conference program without requested paperwork and uh it's you have to be in by the deadline of april 26th it sounds like they're going to hold firm to that aaron and and not let us uh, some of us slide a week or two so <laughs> everybody that, that would like to speak and and you know I, I talk to people all the time who said who say man I, I i'd love to be on that conference schedule well here's your chance and yeah. they are always looking for new faces so yeah for sure uh, you know in addition aaron uh the Imprint Sportswear Show and Impressions Magazine reached out to us and asked us if they could make a really, really big announcement right here on Two Regular Guys. So listen in on April 12th to hear what the folks at uh, uh, ISS and Impressions uh, had to tell us about 2020. Yeah, looking forward to uh, to their announcement. Uh, they haven't let the cat out of the bag quite yet, uh, so we always like to get the early scoop, but uh, we, we apparently cannot be trusted so um <laughs> no <But laughs> make the announcement, so. <laughs> yeah they're gonna make the announcement here so we're excited about that uh speaking of that that presentation thank terry if i can just go back to that real quick um yeah like you said there's definitely been uh some discussion uh about you know getting on the, the conference schedule and um you know we we were fortunate enough to be able to host christine and and three other wonderful ladies to uh discuss some things and there was some discussion about you know getting to be a part of those things. And, and, uh, you know, I, I think everybody's kind of come to realize that the opportunities are there just a matter of, you know, getting in, and grabbing those opportunities by the, by the horn, so to speak. So, uh, you know, this is, this is your chance right there and we're putting it out there for everybody. I'm not even sure if they wanted us to, but you know what, <laughs> they have well, not slapped me on the hand yet. So, <laughs> and, and, you know, Aaron, uh, a lot of folks, they get a little, they, they think, wow, I, I, I don't have time. It's a month. Yeah. All they want to paragraph talking about what it is that you would like to talk about and and and, and why you uh, are the person to talk about it so it's it's pretty simple to get started and you have a lot of time i mean we're talking january 2020 before you actually uh, stand up in front of a group and do yep. your presentation yeah and and you know they want they want new like you said they're looking for fresh faces they want new content um in in the uh, email that we got uh you know, they're looking for 301, you know, 300 level kind of 
information, you know, instead of just the basics, they're looking for that kind of thing. They're looking for panel discussions. So maybe you're, you're not comfortable just st standing up there speaking by yourself, you know, get, get your friends together, honestly. And, and I don't know if I've ever told you this or not, Terry, but really that's how I got started with this is I didn't have the guts to do it by myself. So I had to ride Terry's coattails and, uh, you know, we did some seminars together and then he helped me understand and how to feel comfortable. So find somebody like Terry, that's a the veteran and, and, uh, yeah, make it happen. Get yourself out there. So, and, and, and we, uh, we both learned from each other because I went away from having three word slides and you went away from having three paragraph graph slides. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had to meet in the middle. Yeah. I had paragraphs and paragraphs and that people would just sit there and read and, and people would look at your slide and go, what's he talking? Okay. Well, we'll just listen to him. <laughs> I would be like, what's next? <laughs> Uh, good stuff. All right. Well, we got people checking in already, Terry. Um, the next announcement that I had here, um, you and I recently talked to uh, Clay, Barbara, at uh, the DAX show in Kansas City, and, and uh, we actually got a, a message from him on Facebook at facebook.com slash two regular guys. He sent us a message that uh, his new program that he's been working on a new project called Training in Corel is, is uh, up and live. And it's a joint effort of imprint industry professionals to make sure that imprint companies have the knowledge they need to be successful. Tens of thousands of screen printers, embroiderers, engravers, wide format printers, sublimators, and promotional products distributors have asked for our knowledge base to be organized in an easy to follow system. So Training in Corel Dot com is just that. Uh, the site costs $29 a month for access to hundreds of hours of Corel software training specifically for imprinters. Uh, they are actually running a promo right now. And that promo is there's no sign up fee. And that promo is good through Tuesday the 2nd, uh, kind of as their grand opening special. So you can check them out at trainingincorel.com or uh, you can hit their Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Corel training. So, uh, interesting stuff from clay and and he's always been a uh, fantastic corel trainer so uh bringing a Absolutely. group of people together to, to bring some great information and we're excited to uh announce that here you you heard it first on the two regular guys right <laughs> exactly and, and hey if, if you uh, need any help at all with corel draw uh clay is the guy he, he's uh, spoken on the subject lots he's done lots and lots of consulting he is an expert so uh take advantage of that clay's a great guy as well yeah uh, Aaron, definitely I, I, yeah, I have a couple of shout outs from the ISS show. Uh, yeah. And, and we love to have people come by and see us at trade shows and say that uh, you, you listen to the two regular guys. So uh, we actually had uh, several, Aaron. Uh, Ron Goodwin with Goodwin Graphics stopped by to say hello, as well as Dean Hudson from Monterey T shirts in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Uh, Timothy Howe from Spectrum Designs Foundation from Fort Washington, New York came by. And uh, Aaron, this one is a message specific, specifically for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jim Kazikas uh, with Four J's today in uh, West Suffield, West Suffield, Connecticut, <laughs> asked me to tell uh, you, Aaron, that uh, his last name is pronounced Kozikas. <laughs> <laughs> So as, it, as we it, all know, as those of you that listen to the program regularly understand that I am the butcher of names uh, near and far. And uh, so good. I, yeah. If everybody could just send me their fanatical pronunciation of their names, I would be just fine. So uh, I'd probably perfect. still mess up. So Kazikis, I got it. Kazikis, Jim, I've got it. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure I'll screw it up still, probably, but uh, appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> listening right now. So, uh, And uh, one more thing, Aaron. Uh, I'm here at the NBM show in Irving, Texas. Yes, I was home for a total of two days to do laundry and uh, catch my breath and come here. And, and I'm not going home till Monday. But um, uh, the uh, Jay Bissell, myself, and a couple of the guys from the Equipment Zone got to uh, got invited over to uh, Printed Threads, which is Brett Bowden. Uh, Brett Bowden's uh, a great friend of the show. He's also on the board of directors for SGIA. Last year, he was uh, he was the chairman of the Garment Decorators Committee and uh, and was integral in putting together the ThreadX program. Yep, yep. Uh, so, oh, yeah, over in Fort Worth, uh, uh, three days ago, we got to go over and uh, <laughs> uh, get do the walkthrough and uh, spend some time. Uh, his wife came over and uh, there was some, some foosball played out in the uh, warehouse and, uh, and then a little dinner. <laughs> some <barbecue. laughs> nice. So, Thanks to Brett and, uh, and and all the folks over at Printed Threads for inviting us out. We had a really nice time uh, viewing a really, really uh, uh, great production facility. For sure. That sounds great. That sounds uh, sounds like a good time. I, I've not had a chance to get to Brett's place, so definitely next time I'm in Texas, I'll see if I can work that out. Maybe I can weasel my way into that invitation somehow. So <laughs> I'll just take you with me, Terry. You're my 
you're, you're my entry into lots of doors. So. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Good to talk. I, I'm excited you got to meet Tim Howe from Spectrum Design. We've had them on a couple times, and and uh, Tim, right. great guy, great program over there that they're doing yeah as we all know that's a near and dear to my heart kind of thing um all right terry well we still need five things we're still looking for five things we had uh, joe help us out once but we're still looking for you guys to uh present five things and so you just go to our website uh excuse me two regular guys.com slash five number five things and uh, you will be able to uh submit your it, it, easy you know it, it, we're not looking for paragraphs we're not looking for tons and tons of content. We want five key points about something that gets the conversation started. So um, we're going to leave that going. It seems like we've lost a little steam with five things. So we'll see it. it, it uh, it's hanging on the chopping block right now. <laughs> so it's up to you guys out there. And it's a great opportunity for people to know uh, about you, your company and, and your thoughts on the industry. So take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's still out there. Um, uh, Thanks to uh, our friends when we had, uh, um, I think it was it was Lisa, right? Lisa Shaw, where we started talking about the regulators. It was I know it was yes. Christine. It was Christine's idea. Um, Christine's but, idea, uh, exactly. Yeah, we, so, we needed a name for our posse. Yeah, our, our crew. So we've we've come up with that name thanks to Christine after our discussion with Lisa Shaw, and um, so regulators. And now what we need is a logo. A, some sort of a visual representation of the regulators. So again, we've thrown that out to you guys over our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys where you're at right now, probably watching this show. Um, we've thrown that out there and uh, we're looking for submissions. So uh, send, send those submissions and uh, make sure that uh, the winner will get a, a, a tumbler. I don't have my tumbler with me right now because it's dirty. So I'm just using my ThreadX bottle right now, but uh Terry's got one. I think Eric's got one. Christine earned one. So um, you can earn your own Tumblr as well uh, just by sending, uh, it, by being the winning submission for the regulators logo. So that's that's that. One other thing, Terry, I know we've got lots of stuff going on here, but, uh, you know, because of five things being teetering on the edge there, uh, we want to replace it with something potentially here. So we, we're, we're batting around some ideas. I had a few ideas I threw out in our, our little hangouts that you and uh, Eric and I uh, thread that we have going on. And um, I had some crazy ideas. Eric had some good ideas. You were at a trade show working, so we haven't heard from you yet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shocking. Um, <laughs> So right now we're kind of leaning towards kind of a, like a, a last word kind of segment, but basically we're just looking to have you guys interact and be part of this community as much as you would like, and, and to be able to bring topics and conversations that you want to talk about. So um, if you have ideas for something you'd like to see on the two regular guys during the two regular guys, uh, whatever, send them our way. I know. Um, and I just spaced on his name and gentleman had suggested uh, photography, learning about some photography for product photography. So I've yet to find an expert in that space yet, but I will, um, we will hopefully <laughs> I have been hunting. Terry's been at a trade show the entire year. So, um, <laughs> poor guy's what working his tail off. <laughs> so since I'm the bum that doesn't work, uh, you know, <laughs> all right, good stuff. So anyhow, let us know, cool. uh, we've got, you know, plenty of viewers here today so make sure you start posting those comments in in the uh in the, the comment section there terry so there we go finally done right. <laughs> well hey we want to we want to thank all of our regular listeners and uh and viewers here on facebook and and to any of our new listeners tuning in today and whether you like it or not you are now uh, part of the regulators so there you go there you go guys regulators <laughs> <laughs> hey if you have an idea for a future show uh, you can go to our contact us page at two the number two regular guys.com or you can reach out to us on social media we are everywhere as two regular guys and if you are catching the live video via via facebook live please jump in and participate we love to have uh, participation from the audience and with that aaron let's hear a word from our gold sponsor all right This episode of The Two Regular Guys is brought to you by Brighton Leap, makers of the Reggie Award-winning Embrilliance embroidery software. Embrilliance is different. 
You don't need hardware dongles or to trade active seats for every user. One license lets you run every computer in your shop at once. And Brilliance runs natively on both Mac and Windows. Your single license lets you install on both platforms. And Brilliance is modular. If you only need customizing with lettering, sizing, and recoloring, you can get just that. And Brilliance's unique stitch processing tools even allow you to resize and improve expanded stitch files from digitizers or stock collections for faster running, lighter embroideries. If you decide you need fully featured digitizing, it's fast and easy to add powerful design creation tools to your system. You can start with any tool and build your ideal kit. All in Brilliance programs run standalone or work together in their unified platform. See the difference for yourself at embrilliance.com. Two regular guys listeners can enter the exclusive code 2RG, that's the number 2RG, at embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off your entire purchase. All right. Well, we want to thank again uh, Brighton Leap for their support as a gold sponsor. We do still have other sponsorship uh, opportunities available, so check out the details at two, the number two regularguys.com slash sponsorship. The number two. So you remember the number two. I love the that. <laughs> All right, Terry. Well, we've MBR two. <laughs> no, no, no. Just the number two. Okay. All right. A a reminder though, yeah, definitely use that uh, coupon code two RG. Pretty simple. Uh, in brilliance.com slash store, ten percent off your entire order. Huge uh, thanks to Brilliance for their support, and uh, definitely a software that you want to check out uh, if you're an embroiderer. Heck, I'd check it out even if you weren't an embroiderer because it'll help you understand even if you're contracting that stuff out. So good stuff there. All right, Terry. Well, shall we finally get our guest in here? Uh, we've uh, wasted plenty waiting. of time. We've got lots of great stuff to talk about. So. Yes, he has. All right, here we go. Let me uh, get him going up there. Will Hankey has two passions, supporting our U.S. veterans and helping businesses tell their story online, providing them with increased exposure, more customers, and higher revenues. For over 20 years, his company, Red Canoe Media, has helped mom and pop startups and multi-million dollar companies with their digital marketing strategies. Will teaches monthly classes and speaks at events throughout the area on a wide variety of topics from analytics to e-commerce. Along with his daughter, Amber, he also holds coaching and training sessions for small business owners in his private membership group, Red Canoe Elite. He is an avid business and marketing blogger and has published several eBooks, including an Amazon bestseller in marketing. Welcome to the show, Will. Well, thanks for having me. appreciate it. All right. Well, you know, we talk about uh, company names a lot here on the show. So tell us why Red Canoe Media. What does that mean? Well, as we'll find out a little bit later on, I'm a huge float trip fan. We'll talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, my uh, back in the early 2000s, my business was called whereismybusiness.com. And it just didn't flow right, didn't sound right. And I brought in a, a marketing guy to help me. We put all these post-it notes on the wall. And we're talking about all these names like Upward and Accelerate and all these different things to, you know, come up with. And I also had Red Canoe Media in my head, you know, so it was on the wall. Uh, so as we started slicing things off, we got down to five or six. And I'm like, you know what? I just really like Red Canoe Media. It doesn't make any sense. It has nothing to do with digital marketing, but it it, it kind of tells everybody what I like. So that's that's where it came from. That's how I... That's why I went with. <laughs> well, you said you're looking for flow. What's better for flow than a red canoe, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, well, let's dive right into this here because we got lots of great information that I, I, our our listeners want to hear about. So, what are the top things you should be doing with your website? Okay, so um, good question. I think the first thing prior to even doing anything with your website, one of the first things you need to do is really understand who your audience is and understand who that person is that might want to purchase from you uh, and understanding their pain points, things like that. So having some sort of a persona drawn out and written out on you know, a Google Doc or something Okay. So that when you are creating any kind of content or anything, you're talking to that person and you're solving that problem. I think that that makes for a better uh, end content. And I think there's a better connection with the with the person reading your website at two in the morning. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think personas is definitely the first thing. Sometimes we call them avatars, but they're the same thing. Um, another thing is a tool that I really like called Screaming Frog. And it's got kind of a long URL, so just, just Google Screaming Frog and you'll find it. But this tool, basically you download it, put it on your computer, and then type in your website. And it will give you a listing of all kinds of search engine related things and how they see your title tags, how they see your descriptions, which ones are missing, which ones are too long, which ones are too short. 
uh, which one, which pages are, are missing crucial elements for search engines. And it's just a great tool. Uh, there's a free version that lets you crawl up to 500 pages. So if you have a small site, uh, small in the relative term, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe a non e commerce type of site. Uh, a lot of us, when we started getting into e commerce, those pages duplicate very quickly. Uh, and I think the paid version might be a couple hundred bucks a year. Uh, but if you're just going to use it once or once every quarter to kind of run through and see which pages really need some drastic help, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, and then the last thing, of course, I kind of already alluded to that, and that's content that talks to a solution. Okay. Creating content on a regular basis is a super good thing to do for your business uh, and creating multiple types of content. So, you know, we're doing video and audio today. This could also be transcribed and turned into text. So, boom, you just hit three of them, three different ways of getting that same exact content out. So replicating, repurposing content, all that stuff really works well. And uh, and then talking to some sort of a solution. So looking back at your personas and creating content that that pokes at their pain points and then offers a solution. Yeah, yeah. Very good. This it could be transcribed, but uh, there's no time in the day left for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so stop suggesting that kind of thing. <laughs> Screaming frog. I love that. By the way. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and our, our show producer, Eric Campbell, had actually found the uh, the link for us. So we've got it uh, scrolled on the bottom. If you're watching the video version here, you can check that out. Or or like Will said, just just Google that. So, Will, can I just real quick go back to what you talked about? I like the content that talks to a solution. Can can you maybe just dive a little bit deeper into, into what that means for people, a, a solution? I, I think sometimes people kind of get lost and they're creating a ton of content the people that should be reading it really don't care, I guess. <laughs> so how would you best focus on that? Well, I think something I heard the other day was you don't want to buy a drill. You want a hole in your wall, right? That's what you really <laughs> want. And yeah. you have to buy a drill to get that done. So if you're writing content and talking to that solution, which is you'll have a beautiful one inch round hole in your wall at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, it, that makes more sense. It, com it connects with the user. Uh, with the visitor, and it just talks more to the solution. Uh, you know, uh, another way to talk about it is features ver versus benefits. Okay. A lot of people talk about the features of your service and the features of your product, and you know how pretty your T-shirt is and all this stuff. But if you talked about how cool you're going to look walking down the boulevard in your new fancy T-shirt, yeah. you know, you're connecting more with that audience, and and they're more likely to buy because you're solving something in their head. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, I've, you know, you never hear Apple talking about how many megabytes or megapixels or this or that, that they, they're showing you how awesome and cool you're going to look with your, your Apple logo hanging out the back of your phone. Kind of. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. My wife just had to have the new galaxy S 10 as soon as it came out and she could care less about the features, right? <laughs> You know, it was just the thing. So she had to have it. So, yeah. okay, go get Absolutely. it. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Love it. Okay, good, good. Well, thanks for going a little bit deeper into that. Well, you know, sure. what, I'm sorry. One of the things that, that, that you had talked to us about is is making your uh, website uh, or treating your website as its own business. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, another way to say that would be um, not treating your website as a brochure. So a lot of companies think that they have to have a website because their competitors have a website. <laughs> and so, you know, oh, well, we, you know, we need the, the about us page. We need the contact us page. So we need our five page website just to have it out there because they have it. But if you started looking at your website as its own business and its own lead generator and its own revenue producer, uh, you're going to be way ahead of most businesses. Uh, there's still there's some stats out there to say 30 to 40 percent of webs of companies in the U.S. still haven't claimed their business on Google, which wow. just blows me away that they haven't even done something as simple as that and say yes, I'm here, right? <laughs> you know, uh, so I think just treating treating your website as more of a a, a even another outreach of your business. And uh, from a selling standpoint, when you go to sell a business or exit a website or business, that website can be a huge asset and a huge part of uh, the sale. And, you know, it might even be the fact that, you know, we have a physical location and we might get a hundred walk-ins a month, but on our website, we have a hundred thousand people seeing our brand every month. That becomes a big differentiator in price at the end of the day. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's fantastic. I, I love that, uh, that mentality. And, and I, and I agree. I mean, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've been talking to small businesses and, you know, that they've said, Oh, I, I ask them what their challenge is. Oh, well, you know, I really, I really need a website. I'm like, well, what, what's your, what's your, what do you need the website for? Oh, well, my competitors have a website, so I need, I need my, you know, like you said, brochure and that just not it, you know, you need to tell your story. So I, I love that. Perfect. Definitely. All right. Well, you mentioned Google and people not claiming their, their listing. Um, so let's, let's talk Google. Uh, what, what's Google up to lately? What's the latest thing going on in the Google world? Well, two things I want to talk about. You know, we we talk about the search engines, but in reality, we mean Google at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. You know, the number two search engine is YouTube, which of course happens to be owned by Google. So, <laughs> so we really need to pay attention to what they're telling us to do. Two of the big things that they're talking about uh, in the last couple of months, the one is mobile first index. And basically what they've done is uh, over the last couple of years, they've been telling everybody, you need to have a mobile friendly version of your website. Uh, and it needs to load quickly on a mobile device. It needs to be parsed down so that it doesn't have all this ancillary stuff. You know, it needs to load quickly. And now the last couple of months, Google has actually kind of separated themselves into two different indexes. So you could, in theory, have a website that's not mobile friendly and rank very high in somebody who's searching on a desktop. But then they pull up their phone and they search for that exact thing, same thing, and you might not show up at all. So, you know, they're actually separating those two out and you could rank on one, you could not rank on the other, or or hopefully you rank on both, right? Uh, so having a website that is not only mobile friendly, but loads quickly, still has the information that they need and has a very quick way for people to reach you. So on a desktop version, they might be researching something, but if they're on a phone and they're looking for Mexican restaurants near me, you know, you need to have a button to call. You need to have a button to order. Now you need to have a button to get directions. You know, that's the stuff they're looking for nice and quick. So you have, you have to have those things in, in place so that people, so you're answering the questions a lot quicker. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. I, in fact, uh, you, uh, joined me on small business Saturdays not too long back back in January and um, the comment that you made there that uh, I still laugh at to this day is uh, best place to hide a dead body is on page two of the Google search index. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. that is a fact. <laughs> and and, yeah. and the mobile thing is is so true. I mean when you think about your day, just your own personal self, your day. How often, I mean, maybe you're sitting at your desk doing some things and you're searching around, but for the most part, when, when something pops in your head, you know, you're, you're, you're in the bathroom, you're at the restaurant, you're, you know, whatever. Um, so I, I think that people kind of forget that. And if you can understand like what Will shared with us there, that they're two separate search engines, basically, um, that's, that's pretty interesting change of uh, paradigm as to how you build your website. So good yeah. stuff there. Um, Bing, Bing, talk to us about Bing, though. I think at the last E for E meeting, you told me something interesting about Bing and, and Yahoo. Yeah, uh, the Yahoo used to be they they used to be the player before Google even came around. Uh, but over the last couple of years, Yahoo actually is no longer a search engine. They're actually powered by Bing. So uh, if you do a search on you, a Yahoo at the bottom of the page, it says powered by Bing. So kind of interesting. The other thing uh, talking about. Uh, people on mobile versus desktop, uh, the skew is different. So we're talking about personas. Uh, younger, the younger audience out there is more likely to be searching on a phone for something. They're yeah. also more likely to be searching on YouTube for something instead of Google, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other end, older folks are termed, uh, they're more likely to search on Bing because Bing is the default search engine that comes with their PC and they don't want to change it. That's so it, so just just knowing these kind of things about, you know, your persona, they're very, in, they're very important for your business. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about those things. That's that's great. That's great. <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, searching on your phone, it just reminds me of speaking of younger people. My 18 year old daughter, she will sit on the couch in my living room and watch Netflix movies on her phone. And I'm like, you know, that's right there. The TV is right in front of you. You could just put that right on that TV. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm good. And <laughs> she's just sitting there looking at her phone. So it's, it's a new world. But uh, uh, also in, in my living room is uh, is 
uh, this woman who gives me advice on the weather and things like that, Alexa. And, and uh, <laughs> it, it feels so personal now that I feel like when I'm going to walk in from this trip, she's going to say, well, where have you been for the last two weeks? <laughs> 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 I've got all this weather built up. I can tell you about <laughs> but, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, people doing voice searches like with Alexa. Yeah. So uh, Alexa would be considered a voice search, Google home, uh, Siri, of course. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your, okay, Google, uh, my, my Samsung came with something called Bixby. Uh, oh, I, she's talking to me. Yeah, I, I, was gonna say, I had to change, <laughs> I had to change my uh, Amazon uh, mobile that's sitting here to a different name. Cause we talk about Alexa all the time and it would go off every time on the show. Anyhow, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Well, <laughs> So yeah, when when people are starting to modify their the way that they're searching for something, it's it's right there at their hands, or they don't even have it in their hands anymore. They they have it in the kitchen, and if they need a recipe, they can just say, you know, find me a recipe on such and such, and and sure enough, there it is. So, from a search engine standpoint, they're back to personas. You have to understand how people are searching for you and what information they're searching for, and then modify your uh, your your content on your site to answer those questions as well. So um, another thing related to that is Google My Business. Uh, that's google.com slash business, claiming your listing there and optimizing that listing. And that's gonna help you with searches that are related to, um, can you, you know, uh, Siri, can you find X near me? So they, they take those words near me coordinate that with the map system, the GPS, of where your location is, all that kind of stuff, and then produce those results because of those things. So optimizing your content with your location and stuff like that can really drive more people to your site. Nice. Yeah, the, the voice thing is is so interesting, you know, because it does change a lot. I, you know, I, you obviously are live this for you said 20 years, right? Will with this business. So oh, yeah. you've seen, you've seen every iteration of, of what SEO means, you know, where, where people were stuffing uh, keywords in, in white text at the bottom of their page to now those keywords, we don't, you know, when we do a voice search, we don't search the same way that we would if we're typing something in. So right. how does that, I mean, how, how do you kind of manage that uh, difference between typing in a search voice search how do you how do you get all that stuff to kind of jive on on one website well i think the trick is just knowing what keywords for each page are going to potentially rank and then creating content that uh that answers the question and uses a, ver a variety of keywords so google has something called the knowledge graph which okay. understands relations to relationships to words so if i have a blog on spaghetti uh they expect me to have words like meatball and fork and mozzarella, right? <laughs> and they understand how those words work together for the purpose of me ranking for the term spaghetti. Okay. So, so the big thing is, uh, you know, we used to give our writers uh, uh, a keyword and say, please write a piece of content for this keyword so we can rank for this keyword. Yeah. Nowadays, we actually give them a topic and just have them write on the topic because they're not forced to put that keyword in and make it sound unnatural. They write for the topic and then we may add in the keyword into a headline or something like that to st still rank for that keyword. But the content sounds very much more natural, not forced. There's no such thing as keyword density anymore, those kind of things. Uh, whereas you said back in the day, you know, we knew that we needed the keyword 8% of the copy needed to be the keyword it needed to be bolded once or twice. It needed to be in the title. It needed to be in the headline. Some of those are still true, but not so much. It's really more about creating a piece of content that just answers a question and naturally has the right keywords in the right places. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got a question from our, our show producer, Eric Campbell here. He says, uh, does it help to post with natural language questions and answers for voice search? Yeah, definitely. So people search differently uh, when they're typing in versus when they're talking. Yeah. Uh, so so you might actually want to create content on something like where can I find uh, Mexican, the best Mexican food in St. Louis or yeah. something, writing a piece of content on that, because that's something that people are going to type in. I mean, I'm sorry, speak to their phone. You know? yeah. so, so, you know, creating those different pieces of content understanding how people are searching for you and finding you and then writing content for that. There is something in Google analytics called site search uh, where you can okay. actually 
hook up the search on your website to Google Analytics. And so what happens is somebody might type in um, power tools, you know, and land yeah. on your website. But when they get to your website, they're going to type in drill, right? We talked about that earlier. They're yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. more specific when they get on your site or they're going to type in drill for one inch hole. You know, so yeah. the search that they do originally is not necessarily the search they do once they get to a page that they think has the answer to their question. So you can track those searches on your website inside of analytics and then see what people are typing in and whether they found it, whether they purchased or they had trouble finding it and you need to write a piece of content about it. You know, I think okay. it's interesting that yeah. uh, something you mentioned <laughs> along the way here is is uh, in, in when you talk about a subject like this, when you referred to back in the day, uh, we're talking <laughs> about a couple of years ago. <laughs> back in the day, you know, back in 2016, this is how we did it. <laughs> yeah, it could be true. back in 2017 or, or 2018. You know, it could Throw be it that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Well, so best Mexican food restaurant in St. Louis, uh, La Coretta in St. Peter's, just so everybody knows. Um, <laughs> So a little test to kind of test out what we're talking about here. Everybody post what you think is the best Mexican food restaurant in your city is, and then go search for best Mexican restaurants and see how they end up. And then uh, if if they're low on the list, send them Will's uh, website and he will help them out. <laughs> yeah. Did we promise our listeners no homework? This is a <laughs> we, we, never no <laughs> we never did. We never did, Terry. There, there's always homework. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Um, all right. Well, you know what? I, I think, and we can come back. If anybody's got questions for Will about SEO, we've, we've got some time here. So please feel free to go ahead and post those questions and we'll ask him. But in the meantime, uh, as we talked about, we want to talk about float trips too. I, I discovered that Will actually has a website, floatmissouri.com. So tell us about float trips. Help help this Phoenix boy understand what a float trip is all about. <laughs> <laughs> so there are float trips around the country. Colorado is very well known for them, Alaska. Yeah. But those are going out and having a crazy day down the river, uh, you know, in Colorado, especially typically they're on rafts and you're getting thrown yeah. all over the place. Uh, float trips in Missouri are a little different. Basically, you get a canoe or some sort of floating device, uh, bring along a cooler, and you know, just kind of sit there for six hours, and and hopefully, be uh, cognizant enough at the end to be able to get out of it. <laughs> so a lot different uh, float trip than in other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I lived in Arizona, I did do a float trip there, and on the on the Salt River, Terry, you're probably familiar with it, and. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm not sure it was a flow trip. It, it, it just it was it was kind of more of a creek. There was a bunch of times where we had to actually stand up and walk. And I'm not really sure it was actually a river either. I think it may have just been a lot of. Yeah, it was gross. I had to shower afterwards. So we'll just put it that way. <laughs> well, <you laughs> so know, that's why I was so excited to find out about actual float trips. <laughs> well, my, when my uh, my older daughter, Taylor, was in college, uh, she and I did the float trip down the Salt River. And the water must have been up because we didn't have to get out to uh, to. Uh, uh, walk any, but uh, what's interesting about a float trip like that is everybody's there for the same purpose. You know, you start on one end and end at the exact same place, and and if you run out of beer, there's one floating by. There's, <laughs> there's people's, uh, people's the coolers being overturned and things like that. There's just uh, you just grab one out of the water. It's uh, it's like a, a a river of beer. It was uh, it's kind of a nice. beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, it nice, can nice. be a lot of fun. Typically, it's the younger crowd that does it. Uh, as we get a little bit older, we're looking for the the more quieter versions of the float trips. Uh, and then, you know, for an example, my wife, she prefers to go on a paddle trip. So when she gets in the, the canoe, her objective is to get to the other end and get out. My objective is to not do anything. <laughs> and just relax. So I'm constantly getting yelled at. Are you going to catch up with us or not? You know, from from half a mile down the river. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You know, you know. <laughs> and then there are different rivers. Some of them are, you know, if you're not in your 20s, then you probably shouldn't go. Uh, you know, <laughs> just because they're super rowdy and you know crazy. Uh, and then there are other other rivers where you know that, uh, or if you go during the week, it's going to be less. Uh, hectic or chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So, Will, the, the floating here in, in uh, Missouri, 
you know, what I think of float trips is uh, typically uh, on a tube or something like that. You, you mentioned the kind of the rafts that they have in Colorado. I've been on a couple of those. Is, is that the way it is here? Tubes or is there more of a canoe? What, what a red canoe media, you know, <laughs> yeah. what, what's that all about? Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think canoes are probably the most common. Uh, there are some places in Saint in in Missouri that do uh, tubes only, and there are some that do rafts. Uh, okay. And you can also just rent a kayak. Uh, they've also got now they've got stand up paddle boards, uh, so it's wow. basically just a vessel to get you uh, to get some beer. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that, man, this sounds right up my alley. So uh, Lisa Shaw's checking in here, Terry. Uh, sh she's from the Colorado area. And she said with all of the snow melt there, the uh, float trips might be a little bit on the wild side this year. So yeah, I imagine uh, probably a little, a uh, little crazy there. So Todd uh, from the not quite Chicago area, kind of between St. Louis and Chicago area. Um, he says they have their weekly here in Illinois too. lost track of the amount for picnic tables floating. I've seen, um, but he is able to bring us back to uh, decorating and, and they do koozies and shirts for these float trips. That's a fantastic idea. Uh, yeah. I have a, I had a, somebody reach out to me one time. They had koozies that were weighted on the bottom. So your beer wouldn't flip over. So even if you, you put it, even if it's in the water next to you and you could even tether it to your thing, but then the, the cold river was keeping it cool uh, as it was inside the koozie. So kind of a cool idea. Nice. nice. Well, yeah, so the, the person rather than noodling about how to uh, save the environment was Man, if I have another beer turnover. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, hey, speaking of beer, um, when Aaron uh, and I were talking about uh, doing your show and beer was in the title, I'm like, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us about uh, what beers you enjoy. So I'm a, I'm a lighter beer guy. Uh, I love the Hefeweizens, the, yes. the Blue Moons, that kind of stuff. Ha however... Um, there's a there's a brewery called Breckenridge, which actually I think uh, Anheuser Busch either bought out or maybe they started, uh, but they've got a vanilla porter, which is a dark beer, and it is fantastic. Uh, the only bad thing about it is they serve it at the casino here in town, and uh, you know my wife will eventually get peeled away from a, a slot machine at some point. Uh, she has to go to the bathroom or something, and she'll say, "Oh, you're drinking the porter." I guess I'm driving. So, <laughs> so uh, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I have had Breckenridge beer before. And, and did they still uh, bottle it in 15 ounce bottles uh, several years ago when I was in Denver? That's the way they were. And, uh, and they were quite strong as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm assuming at some point Anheuser-Busch bought them out. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you can get it in the, in the regular, uh, whatever that is, a 12 ounce bottle, I guess. But uh, the more ounces sounds better, and that's less work, less time having to get up and go get one, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. So real quick, guys, before we get too far down the uh, the rabbit hole here, we've got a great <laughs> question from, from a listener uh, actually about website content. So let's uh, circle back here. Um, Kara asks, uh, what's a good length for a piece of website content? A, to engage the readers. B, to make Google happy. <laughs> so, so that answer has changed over the years as well. Back in back in the day, yeah. right? We, Last year, we could, we could write a 600, 650 word piece of content, and that would be okay. Uh, and in fact, if somebody wrote an article that was let's say twelve hundred words long, we would actually break that into a part one and a part two, and use it as two separate blogs that connected together. Okay. Uh, however. Uh, over the years, uh, we, we have writers on staff that write for us and we're always telling them, okay, now you need to write at least 850, you know, now that number is a thousand. So we mm -hmm. need, we need content that's at least a thousand words long. Uh, you know, so we might, we're actually pulling back on the, uh, the quantity of the content that we're creating as far as how many we're posting for our clients. And we're, we're going more towards better quality. Once again, answering the question, uh, trying to do it without adding any fluff to it. Uh, and we're also going back to some of those part one and part twos and combining them together and making them one long article. So so the answer is a thousand words, but okay. if you have 2,000, 2,500 words of really good content and that answers the question and keeps that person on that page, go for it. Yeah, yeah. So probably as far as the, the A part, engage the readers, that has 
probably little to do with the length, more to do with what the actual content is. And, and, uh, but then the length Google wants a thousand words sounds like. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, they don't come out and tell us a number. Well, yeah. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but the, the thing they've got something called uh, time to long click and time to long click is somebody searches for blue widgets and they go to a website and they come back to Google. Google sees that, that come back, whether it was 10 seconds later or 30 seconds later, the fact that they came back and clicked on another result tells Google that they didn't find the answer on that first one. If they do, if they do that a couple of times and then they go to, you know, click number three and they don't come back and do any other kind of search or any other click, then Google thinks, okay, number three must have answered their question. So having that content, uh, you don't necessarily have to be number one. Google will watch the content and how people are reacting on your website uh, and you know taking that in. If you're running Google Analytics, they know how long that person was on your website and you know how how many pages they looked at, all that kind of stuff. So uh, like it or not, they're watching. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, <laughs> all right. So Eric, our, our show producer says, finally, my inability to keep it short and limit my number of points is paying off. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, Terry, my my longer uh, slides, I I can I can now get some juice yeah. out of that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing with longer content is you need to be uh, cognizant of not ha just having blocks of text because nobody's going to look at it. You need to break it up with some lists and bullet points and images and things like that to keep them engaged. Okay. Uh, so that's really important as well. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That, that's a really good point because yeah, I find myself kind of getting too much where it's just like this big, long, you know, read, uh, put yourself to sleep kind of thing. So if you can, like I said, images, break it up with bullet points. Um, excellent points there. Um, yeah. My, my English teacher would not be happy reading one of my blogs today because <laughs> I probably don't go more than two or three sentences before I do a line break and, and it keeps it broken up and it keeps it more engaging. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, my, my editor mother would hate it too. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll stop asking her to edit my content for me. So, <laughs> all right. Um, Jeff mentioned also length is important, but need a core intro paragraph that fits above the fold on platforms to grab the person's attention and the search engine engine can distill a meaning concept from it. Uh, any, any follow up to that? Will that you can share with us? Yeah, certainly. So there's another thing in, in the world of search engines now called uh, rank zero. And rank zero is the little snippet that you see. So if you type in something like um, recipe for uh, chicken parmesan, yeah. you'll see that Google has a little snippet up there before the results. And it's step one, two, and three of making that chicken parm. And that we call uh, rank zero. So okay. it's possible to have uh, some sort of piece of content that kind of answers the question in that first paragraph uh, before somebody scrolls down the page because Google might use it in that rank zero uh, area as well. And people say, well, I don't want that because then they'll never come to my website. Well, the, the studies have shown that that's just not true. So most people who see that snippet, uh, you know, and it might not be that first uh, organic result. It might be from the third one down. But if they see it in that little snippet there, they're very likely to click on that to get the full uh, piece of content. Uh, good. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right. Well, um, so we've covered floating. We've covered a little bit, bit of beer. Um, now I know when, when we go grab beer, I get you a vanilla porter. So we'll, we'll work on that. If and, I have, if I have an Uber back home, that's fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to come down your way, I guess. <laughs> uh, nice. All right. Well, um, what, what special projects are you working on right now? Will? Um, so I've started another agency, you know, because I have nothing better to do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I joined a group on Facebook called the Seven Figure Agency. And one of the things that they talk about is, is starting a niche website and being very specific about it. So I started a window treatment agency, specifically uh, doing search engine optimization for window treatment companies around the country. And it sounds kind of odd, uh, but uh, you know, I've got a couple clients in that industry already. I understand the language and I've already started picking up clients uh, around the country that are specific to that. So it, it uh, shows them that I'm more of an expert, more of less of a generalist, more of a very specific uh, I know how to get these types of businesses to the top of Google. So that's been a fun little project. I'm only, what, four months in or so, okay. uh, but having a lot of fun 
and uh, and it's it seems to be working. So awesome, well, awesome. We love well, niche markets. So. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. And, and, and honestly, I think you know our listeners can really kind of take a, a, a nugget from that too. You know, yes, they might not be window treatment. Maybe they're doing uh, shirts for a window treatment place. But again, find that niche that it, you can be like own. You know, and, and I love that you've grabbed that and and run with that. That's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows about the Harley Davidson niche. That's, you know, you can just make, just make products specifically for that or Jeep. I mean, these guys are rabid fans of their, of their trucks or whatever. Yeah. We better not call them a truck. They'll be all upset, right? <laughs> yeah. Of their Jeeps. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <for sure>. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, picking out some sort of a niche and serving that market, assuming it's a big enough market. Uh, it's a super smart way to go. Yeah. And, and you're actually, so you've made like a separate website for this. The whole, So you treat it as a completely separate business, right? I yeah. mean, for, for a decorator, like I said, if they're going to go and service the Jeep market, would you recommend that then just creating a whole separate, almost company in a way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then specifically talk to that market, serve that market, put lots of good content out that has obviously the keywords related to that in it. Uh, and then you need to know the lingo. So Jeep, People go wheeling, and wheeling is what they they term going four wheeling and yeah. going on the back roads and things like that. So yeah. understanding those kind of terms is important as well. Yeah, yeah. But, and if you're so, not able to speak the language, then yeah, nobody's going to tune into that content. Yeah. So. Go ahead, Terry. But all these people uh, searching for wheeling West Virginia are like, why do I keep going to this uh, site for? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I, I was right. searching well, for uh, vintage '80s and '90s beachwear the other day, and I kept, yeah, I just I couldn't quite figure out the keywords that I needed uh, the, the, to search for there. So we'll have to do a class on actually searching for the right stuff. <laughs> How to find things on the internet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, well, we're coming down to uh, to our hour, and we really appreciate being on the show. I know I learned a lot. Uh, how can our uh, listeners find you and uh, and reach out? Yeah, listen, thanks for having me on. I, I definitely appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, my website is redcanoemedia.com. Uh, as I said, I'm putting tons of content all the time. Uh, I've got a marketing, uh, I'm, I've got a Facebook group called Marketing Upstream. Yep. Yep. Where I paste, uh, put a lot of things in there. I do a lot of Facebook lives, share a lot of tips, uh, and that's free, which is great. And then I've got Red Canoe Elite, as uh, Aaron mentioned earlier on, and that's a membership site area where I've got well over 100 videos in there on everything from analytics to uh, newsletter critiques and, I mean, anything you can think of, monthly coaching calls, all kinds of stuff in there. So lots of fun. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Well, well, thank you so much for your time. And yeah, definitely get over to uh, Marketing Upstream. And, and we've got the website scrolling at the bottom of the, the video here as well. So uh, check Will out. Great resource. And uh, he will uh, just just send him a check and you'll be happy. Uh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Will. have a great day. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Perfect. Terry, awesome that was uh, good stuff. Is your notebook full? Your, your yellow yeah, legal pad? I don't have, have my legal pad out, so I'm going to have to re-listen, re-watch the show and make yep. some notes. And and I'm thinking of all these people that I want to say, hey, you need to go listen to the show in the archives. This is going to be really, really helpful for you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll get, uh, get terrycombs.com at the top of some keyword. I don't know what it should be, but... <laughs> the guy I met last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's his website. All right. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Good stuff. All right, Terry, where are we at here? I got to get back to our, our place here. Um, all right. A couple of other events coming up for, for us here. Uh, still got the, uh, in fact, uh, I had Will on and Eric posted in the comments there, uh, the link to the, the version that Will and I did where we talked about a lot of these things, but uh, we got into voice search pretty deep too. So if you want to go into that, uh, that was fantastic. Just tons of great information there too. Um, but Aaron Montgomery dot info slash SBS videos, or you can find me over at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Aaron Montgomery dot info. Uh, tomorrow morning, my uh, small business Saturday session is going to be talking about attracting the right customers. So uh, I, as you know, Terry, I'm all about customer experience and, and really kind of bending over backwards for your customers. Uh, but if you aren't attracting the right customers, that that it that bending over backwards for your customer things not going to feel all that good. So um, I'm going to talk about how you find the right customers so it makes it easy to bend over backwards for for your customers. So that's tomorrow. Um, 
April 5th, uh, coming up quick. I can't believe that's next week already, Terry. You're going to be, I don't know if you're going to be home for like 30 minutes or about uh, two days, I believe. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, and you are picking me up at the airport, right? I am indeed. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, so we April should record a show as we drive the, the hour to, uh, to, uh, the, uh, resort that we're going to. <laughs> yeah, outstanding. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, two guys in a car and with cookies or whatever we want to get. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, at Dax, Minnesota, though, I'll be presenting developing a business plan. That's at 1230 on the fifth. And then at 220, I will be presenting, uh, being customer centric equals more profits. So, uh, hopefully I get to meet you out there in Minnesota here coming up next week. Terry, what about you? Um, we'll, we'll get to Eric after we get to yours. I'm sorry. I, uh, okay. I went out of order there. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, I do think after listening to this show that my next uh, novel is going to be about uh, Alexa talking to me, but we're everywhere I go. She's uh, saying, where are you now? Why, why are you home? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'd read that one. <laughs> All right. Well, my, uh, up, my upcoming complete screen printing business courses, uh, I'm going to be in Phoenix with the folks at Workhorse Products on April 27th and 28th. Uh, back to Chicago with Atlas Screen Supply on June 22nd, 23rd. Uh, like yourself, Aaron, I've got two seminars at mm -hmm. uh, Dax, Minnesota. One's going to be on screen printing. One's going to be on direct to garment printing. That's going to be on Friday, April 5th. And all of my upcoming 2019 events, you can find at terrycombs.com under the tab tour notes. Yeah. And for Terry's uh, uh, direct to garment one, you'll have to find another um, another <laughs> time to catch that because that's also at the same time as no. Anyway. <laughs> so Eric asked, uh, when are when when are you guys getting in? So I, I, I don't even remember. Do you have any idea, Terry? I, as I recall, uh, I don't look that far ahead because that's that's next week. But I think that. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we'll probably be at the resort. I think we'd, I think we'd get into the airport at noonish, twelve thirty. Eric, we'll have to take a look and find out for you. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. I think I'm actually later in that, so hopefully I didn't mess that up. I think but. we're close <laughs> to the same time. I think we're close to the okay. same time. I, don't, I just all don't right. recall what time. All right, all right, all right. Um, so speaking of Eric, he will be there at DAX with us, and uh, he's got two presentations as well. Uh, the Digitizing Difference, Foam Gradients, and Performance Wear, and uh, that's on Friday. And then on Saturday, he's presenting Patch Making for Fun and Profit. So uh, make sure... And, and Eric has posted the, the link there. Just go to DaxShows.com and, and you, you'll be able to uh, register for all of those classes and look forward to seeing you there. Um, let's see, where are we at time-wise? I, I think, uh, well, let me just real quick, if you don't mind, Terry, uh, I will sure. just read off the trade shows because we got a couple minutes and I'm sure you've got a few minutes to spare before you have to run down to the show floor. I'm, Is that I'm, I'm an hour late for the show floor anyway, so. Perfect. <laughs> you can you can tell Harry it was my fault. <laughs> I'm sure you already do. But um, anyways, <laughs> Dax, Minnesota, April 5th and 6th, which we already talked about. Uh, the ISA Sign Expo coming up April 24th through the 26th. Uh, then Dax, Chicago coming up the first weekend in May there, May 3rd through the 4th. Uh, NBM Milwaukee is happening May 17th through the 18th. The ISS Houston show happening June 6th through the 8th. Uh, the ASI Chicago show happening July 10th and the 11th and NBM Meadowlands happening July 25th and 26th. So uh, uh, Eric says he would have anyways. So I think uh, <laughs> blamed it on me. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, um, I think we've uh, gotten to uh, cover a lot of ground here, Terry. A great, great show. Thanks great show. very much to uh, Will for his time. And and again, please go check him out at redcanoemedia.com and tell him the two regular guys sent you. And uh, he'll give you extra special treatment. I'm sure of it. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. We'd also like to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell, for doing all that research during the show and posting everything for us and, and all the help he gives us uh, during the week. You can, uh, you can find Eric at ericcampbell.com. And also thanks to our sponsor, Imbrilliance and their family of products. Excellent. All right. Well, next week we are going to be talking uh, and we'll have to figure out all the details since we'll all be there in Dax, Minnesota. But uh, I, I don't know if Bruce is going to be there or not, but we've got Bruce Ackerman from Printavo joining us uh, to talk about getting organized. So uh, I am looking forward to that and uh, we'll have a, a great time in, uh, in Dax, at Dax, Minnesota, as well as talking to Bruce. So it should, should be a lot of fun. All right. And until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's there in Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys.
thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.